Hey there. I wanted to follow up with some more stuff about the uh, mastering video I did the other day where I um, mastered Jared Osborne's song Mothra to make it sound like Glory by Snail Mail. And I talked about at one point that the levels were like crazy hot. And here is an example of the levels right now on the screen. Um, the one on the right would be the actual FLAC file that I pulled down or that I downloaded. Um, and you can see that the integrated loudness on this thing is 7.4 luffs, um, which is really loud. I mean, the guidelines for um, Spotify are, are 14, um, not 7. So it's cranked way up. Um, and I had made some observations the other day about this uh, to some of you in a Slack channel. And... I just kind of wanted to dig in a little bit deeper because I think I confused a couple of you with it. Anyway, so this here on the right um, is the actual statistics off of the flak. And you'll see that the sample peak level is at 0.14, which tells me that's where their limiter was set. It might have been set at 0.1, but 0.14. And then there's some true peak output that actually exceeds zero. Um, if, we'll get to that in a second. So momentary loudness of four short-term loudness of 5.8. Those are both crazy loud numbers. And more importantly, the loudness range is 2.4. So think about it as basically the song has, you know, two and a half decibels of dynamic range to it, essentially. This is at a FLAC file, too. This is not something that's been converted to an MP3 or streaming where you're going to get um, inner sample peaks, where if you've gone in and you've set your limiter at... Point one, that's great on a CD, but when you convert it to streaming, you get a bunch of noise and other fun stuff introduced during the conversion, and all of a sudden, you've pushed above zero into digital distortion land, which for a song like the Snail Mail song is not the worst thing. It's got a distorted vocal style to it, but it can get ugly there really quick. But this is the thing I wanted to point out. When I pulled the file down the first time, I pulled it down by ripping it off of Tidal, and I didn't notice that when I did it off of Tidal that I had normalization on. I should have noticed it, because if you look here, the true peak level is minus 6 and change. The sample peak level is 6.5. The RMS level is minus almost 8.5. Are you noticing something that's like 6 different every time? We come all the way down here... The loudness, it was 4 in the flak. It's 10.5 now. The short term was 5.8. Now it's 12.3. Gosh, we're seeing a number coming over and over. Integrated loudness is minus 14. Why, look at that. That's the target for Tidal. Um, as opposed to minus 7.4. This essentially means the entire file, which, by the way, the loudness range has not changed. The entire file has been turned down by 6 dB. Um, so it went from basically peaking at full scale to peaking at minus six and a half dB. That might be cool, depending on what you're doing with the song. But if you start playing stuff with normalization on it on a streaming service, you're getting turned down by six dB. Um, it's, it's not the worst thing to be turned down. Um, and if you go check a lot of modern music, you're going to find out how loud it all is. Uh, it's well above minus 14. Um, but if you're trying to create something that's really dynamic and you come in and you crush it to an integrated of minus 7, and it gets converted to minus 14, all of a sudden your peak level goes from full scale to minus 6.5. That's crazy. I want to now provide some examples because there's, um, there's a plugin that... Well, actually, I want to show you something first. I want to show you what the files look like. <laughs> so... So that's the waveform on the normalized file. Um, you see all that space there? See all that? That's where it got turned down from where it thought it was hella loud. Um, and if you want to know what it looks like raw, <laughs> I mean, that's the same file. So you're giving back all of that room. Again, may not matter because um, the songs are going to sound loud next to each other. Um, but if you've got something that's really dynamic, what's going to happen is your loudest part is going to only be, um, your loudest part's only going to be at however much you've been turned down to, and your quietest part's going to be that much quieter. Um, 
it's gonna it's it's why when you play your stuff uh, versus professional mixes, why your stuff tends to sound wimpy um, or can. So I want to show this a little more clearly. This is called Streamliner, and um, I'm just gonna start playing. Let me see part of Jarrett's song here. So, this is crazy fast, crazy high already. With you can see the, 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 the peak the sound ratio, or peak the short term ratio, sorry. It's showing up as competitive or loud right here. We're not really doing anything yet. We need to do this. So this is playing as if it's on Spotify Premium. And if you look over here, it's going to get turned down by 6.6 .6 dB. So I'm going to start this back up, and then I'm going to turn on Match, which is going to actually make it sound like what it sounds like on Spotify. So... Apple Music's turning it down even more. So, the point here being, when you hear about this stuff's going to get turned down, you need to be aware of that. And if you completely crush a song, like, well, that snail mail song actually sounds great, crushed. But when I took Jarrett's song and I crushed it like that, it was probably too far. Does that mean I need to aim for a target of 14? No, not at all. His song sounded good, cranked up, but would I aim for 10? Maybe even 9? Possibly. Um, and I want to show you something else here that I found. Let's just go find huh, Radiohead's Creep. Okay. Radiohead's Creep was at a target of 15 and a PSR of 9.3. Or sorry, no, it was at 10. It was at 10. Sorry, there we go. So if I were to take this and say, well, how do we compare to, say, the way that Creep was played? Well. Our overall loudness is 8 dB louder than Creep. Um, and if you were trying to use that as a reference uh, in the kind of dynamics that song had, you would be off by that much, um, which is the equivalent of... Let me see if I can do this. That much. That's insane. The thing that's interesting is if you go through and you actually look at what other songs that were done. Um, I'm looking for one. There it is, under dance. Um, Get Lucky, incredibly popular song. Huh. It went to 10. It went to 10 here. Not 14. 10 and 10. So they were trying to hold the overall, um, the average loudness, the lofts, to minus 10, and they were trying to keep the dynamic range close to 10 dB. It's just something to be aware of when you see, hear all these numbers and see all these things um, thrown about that what they're trying to tell you. 
and whether or not there's actually some um, useful information for you to learn here. But um, my big takeaway from this has been, uh, and I've learned this from talking to other people too, is that you need to you, you need to go ahead and and make your song sound good, and you need to make it as loud as you think it needs to be. But it really is quite educational to listen to it turned down and hear how it compares to other things. Now, I got tons of things in my collection that I've, I've done a comparison before where I went through and did a bunch of spoon songs, for example, and I was shocked that they're all at like eight and seven um, luffs. And I love those. And when I hear them and they come up on a streaming service, they sound great. But if they come up and then one of my songs comes up and I've mastered it and tried to get it to 12 and I don't know what I'm doing with everything else that I'm doing... Mine suddenly sounds like it doesn't belong. Um, I, I'm, I'm definitely not saying to like slam things. I'm just saying you need to be aware of what's going on and you need to be aware of your dynamics. Um, the key is if you push to make things really loud um, and then it gets turned down and you have a song that is highly dynamic with lots of quiet bits in it, they're going to get turned down to the point that it's going to sound like it doesn't belong on the playlist. So, you've either got to try and match your overall song to something else that you like, or you've got to be aware of what you're doing dynamically and make those choices. And those choices are exactly that. They're choices. You're choosing to do it, and you're making things sound the way that you want them to sound. I hope this rambling thing has made some sort of sense um, and is helpful, or when I was talking numbers, that some of this makes sense. Um, as usual, if you have any questions... Um, Either put it in the comments or hit me up through various ways that you know to get in touch with me, and we will um, see if I can either make sense of what I've said or that I can be very, very, very much corrected on how wrong I am, which there's a high likelihood I am. All right. Thanks. Later.